Sitting under an escalator to look up girls' skirts is the last place you would think a teacher would be at. However, Chris Hansen does not exist in this timeline. Instead, there are these punks. The losers try to blackmail Onizuka to give them his wallet, followed with some ass-kicking, and then hand him to the police. Needless to say, the disrespect is blatant. Hence, your boy punches a machine that has nothing to do with the situation, just to send a message that these fellas have indeed f up. Sadly, we only get to see the aftermath of the ass whooping when Onizuka's friend arrives to pick him up after running late to a meeting. The trainee teacher was assigned to a class of delinquents and bimbo girls, who showed no attention to him, making him mad beyond redemption. Although he tries to stay composed, the lack of respect and the students trying to punk him does get under his nerve. I mean, look at this dude. Turns out, our boy was dealt the worst hand in the school getting assigned to a class filled with gangbangers, while the rest of the teacher's classes range from normal to nice. The next day, Onizuka tries to lay some knowledge from the good old Socrates, but the students were like, how about D's? Onizuka continues normally and asks questions, which get answered by what seems the sweetheart of the class, who in turn melts the big boy's heart. Later, as the main man tells the story for his friend, they learn that Onizuka was the leader of the biggest and most feared gang in Tokyo. And although these kids are nothing compared to them when they were their age, Ryuji warns his buddy to be careful and stay out of the troublesome student's business or his new career, might be in trouble. Funny enough, on his way home, the trainee teacher runs into the class sweetheart crying. Mizuki tells him she ran away from home after some trouble with her parents, so a wild Onizuka lets her stay at his apartment. While she cooks and narrates her life story, a menace puts on his furry costume, ready to get down and dirty. Luckily, his conscience kicked in last minute and took that shit off, faster than reverse flash trying to make Barry come. It was me, Barry. I you off at super speed so it'd seem like you nutted at just a woman's touch. Speaking of woman's touch, Mizuki get all close and touchy making little Onidoka, and that's with a capital D, to prick up. As the heat rises and our monetization window shatters, the girl does a 180 and stops mid-act to reveal this was just a prank bro. The delinquent students have set him up to take photos of him in this compromising position, so they can blackmail him and even force the newbie teacher to quit. Betrayed, Onizuka couldn't but sit wondering if she really needed his help or not. After they leave the apartment, the lads circle jerk each other on the clean job they did this time, hinting it's not their first time making teacher's life a living hell. However, karma happens to exist in this anime and she doesn't shy away from sending thugs to deliver a lesson. Now just to be clear, we are not talking about those mean-looking fellas. No sir, we're talking about the legendary delinquent, Eikichi Onizuka. Upon seeing him kick some ass, the boss's PTSD gets triggered, after paying his respect, the little boss now follows Onizuka's teaching on how to make kids behave. The torturing session was both insightful and productive, not to mention satisfying for everyone watching including us. That said, Ruji doesn't find as such and he scolds his buddy since they are in a time where there are not enough jobs. To put it simply, a former gang member from a third-rate college with a history of being violent toward his students will most surely end up jobless. After a night of drinking, Onizuka arrives at the school grounds ready to be fired, but to his surprise, the principal wants to give him a permanent job immediately. You see, to everyone's shock, all the school delinquents turned a new leaf the following day and were cleaning the campus, just because they respected him. It was a sight to behold, seeing them all lined up to welcome him. The royal treatment continued during class and after class, making the great teacher Onizuka the talk of everyone. Consequently, Mizuki the B edge from the other day had to praise him for breaking the trap she developed for new teachers, yet Oni chill as a cucumber Zuka doesn't care and tells her to f off. Mizuki, however, has a trade offer. She shows him her panties, and he receives jail time. <laughs> After failing to conquer the horny, Onizuka takes her on a ride home. He makes himself comfortable as soon as he enters, bridging on the floor and taking food off the counter. I would say he became too comfy to the point that house problems are now his. What kind of major problems, you ask? Major f***ing problems. You see, while riding behind him, the girl kept nagging to go with him home, at every turn, every red light, and every slow traffic, she asked. But once Onizuka refused, she jumped off. Luckily, your boy is a drift master, he made a 180 and picked her up. Now safe and sound, the girl narrates how joyful her life was when they were living a simple life. But when life started improving financially, they moved to a bigger house that made them grow apart. Hearing this sad story, Onizuka gets all serious and mature for like the first time so far. He tells her, no matter how much you want it, or how hard you try, you can't live in the past. It just doesn't work that way. 
Flashbacks of his old life start rolling as he continues, no matter how wonderful it might have been, the past is nothing but the past. Later, Mizuki is sitting in the dark hearing her parents argue about life, business, and cheating. But, have no fear, great teacher Onizuka is here, shirtless with a sledgehammer ready to destroy the thick walls that are preventing this family from sharing a moment. Soon after, the training arc ends. The students shed a genuine tear seeing their savior leave. Mizuki leaves him a note thanking him for everything that he has done to bring their family closer. The crazy girl adds she convinced her dad to not press charges, ending this arc on a big win. Following these events, Onizuka chills at his boy's place with no worry in the world being the principal favorite. He was guaranteed to become a certified teacher. But then he learns too late that to become a public teacher he must undergo a test, which he didn't bother taking. However, Ruji being the best man he is anticipated this kind of stuff would happen and had application forms ready. Turns out, there's no need to pass the teacher's test to work in a private school. Therefore, the next day your boy gets all dressed up to impress the new school at the interview. The bus makes a sudden break resulting in the lady beside Onizuka pumping into him and catching his attention. Oh. La la la, me. A creep getting on all fours to sniff the lady's butt also catches Onizuka's attention. Seeing the sick bastard go too far, the main man punches him out of the bus and asserts dominance, forcing the four-eyed creep to flee after getting late to work. Ms. Fuyatsuki, i.e. the lovely lady, thanks her knight in shining armor for saving her, before they head to the school revealing they both are interviewing for a teaching position. A position he might have had a chance to nail if it weren't for the butt sniffer. Yep, turns out Yamada, the bald creep, was late to his work being the vice principal of the school your boy trying to get into. The poor CV of Onizuka didn't also help, not gonna lie. Yamada criticized it so much and so brutally that the hothead blondie snapped and sent the baldy to the shadow realm. Alas, that is what I wish actually happened. Instead, Onizuka sat there and mumbled. After miserably blowing his shot, Onizuka was so devastated that even Fuyatsuki couldn't get to him. He headed to the cafeteria to cool down. There, the nice lunch lady tried to cheer him up and asked why he wanted to become a teacher anyway. Onizuka answers, since I was a kid, Teachers always called me things like stupid and trash. Fuyatsuki arrives and overhears his past with teachers and why he aspires to be better than them. After this turn of events, great teacher Onizuka became a truck driver putting his teaching days behind him. However, as luck has it, his friends come through, telling him he still has a chance if he can return to school in three hours. Job easier said than done since he is like eight hours away from the city. Yet Onizuka doesn't give up on his dream and starts driving like a demon breaking every law there is as well as taking the people on high-speed chase. Onizuka eventually arrives six hours late to just sit on the doorsteps and let the sad feeling sink in. However, a light of hope that his Mrs. Sakura comes shining in his darkest hour to give him another chance. Yes, the lunch lady is the principal of the school, her hobby is working at the cafeteria to pass some time. Seeing there is a rise of troubles as well as problematic children in the school, she hires Onizuka, the best man to change the future of the upcoming generation. And thus, Onizuka's new career starts and he wastes no time to give the vice principal a heart attack. Starting today, Mr. Onizuka will be living on the campus, a condition the principal had. While carrying his stuff, the students gathered and were gossiping, so the main man drops a huge fart to make them go inside. He also drops a pillow, hence he asks a student named Yashikola for a hand, not to pick his pillow since he can't let anyone touch it, but to pick all of his other stuff. After learning he will be staying in the trash rooftop room, our boy gets understandably dispersed. However, his manner changes once his new buddy looks through his game console and notes he has finished the game Onizuka currently playing. The latter gets on all fours and begs the kid to show him how to defeat the boss Melania. Yashikawa agrees and we can see a bond start forming between the boys. Meanwhile, the vice principal, Mr. Butt Sniffer, is complaining about why Mrs. Sakura hired the man who humbled him twice so far and the lady answers violated him. At least that's the way I see it, Butt Sniffer. <laughs> After leaving his boss's office with his head between his shoulders, Yamada's expression changes when he learns which class his arch enemy will be assigned to. Fast forward to the opening ceremony, Baldi introduces Onizuka as the new teacher for the middle students of class 3-4. Naturally, that doesn't sit well with him as he wants to teach high schoolers. This whole situation embarrasses him, as well as the rest of the teachers. Thus, the vice principal hands him a harsh scolding that would make even rocks cry. That said, when Fuitsupi tries to cheer him up, we learn our boy did not hear shit, he had his ears plugged the whole time. Fugatsuki warns him to be careful dealing with them since class 3-4 is known as the most troublesome class in the history of the school. Great teacher, Onizuka assures her things will be alright as long as he makes a strong first impression. 
And oh boy, what an impression that was. After another L, Wizuka takes attendance and his joy that his new buddy attending his class, the other students see this and start gossiping while one takes pics of GTO. Later, all the teachers enjoy drinks in celebration of the new school year. Fuyatsuki tells him that she learned the last two homeroom teachers quit from psychological stress. Now being a former leader of a legendary gang, Onizuka doesn't seem worried about anything that might happen. The only thing that scares this chat is ghosts. After hearing some noises at night, GTO heads out with garlic around his neck and other crap on him. As he ventures into the darkness, a noise leads him to catch a panty creep going through the girls' lockers. Onizuka being the gamer, he is busts out a Red Dead Redemption move to catch the guy and teach him a lesson. His vigilant work continues to another part of the school, where he catches two kids being all frisky in the dark. Back in his room, he finds writings on his TV that read, Goodbye, Cruel World. Taken back at first, Onizuka recognizes the shadowy figure as his buddy Yoshikawa. The little lad is given up and decides to jump off the roof, but GTO jumps after him and shields him from the impact, destroying the vice principal car in the process. Later, great teacher Onizuka gives his student a lift to back home, he breaks the window and borrows some games. Essentially, this gives the little lad an excuse to tell his parents someone broke in and beat him, instead of telling them he was beaten by a girl. The following day, students gather around a board, Ms. Fuyotsuki heads to see what all the commotion is about, only to be hit with a photo of the main man himself but naked practicing in some BDSM play. Unaware of what's happening, Onizuka wakes up and enjoys a smoke in the hallway before heading to check on everyone. Seeing Fuyutsuki in shock, he walks up with a smile on his face trying to talk to her only to find the pictures of himself in his birthday suit riding a wooden horse. Regardless of how many times he says it's not him, Fuyutsuki doesn't listen and slaps the living hell out of him before storming out. Now that his maiden has left him with a mark on his face, Onizuka makes it his mission to prove to others it's not him in the pics by flashing them, as he doesn't have a scare on his tushy. But it only managed to make matter worse. Shit was so bad, he didn't even have the energy to fight back the vice principal blaming him for killing his car. We soon learned that it was his students working, and their shenanigans didn't stop there, their well-photoshopped pic of him, and the vice principal being homies made him rage quit the class session. Likewise, the vice principal raged in his office even knowing that the pic was fake. He decided to utilize his hate towards Onizuka to vent the all-build frustration from home. Back to the main couple, after some brief talk with Mrs. Sakurai, Fuyutsuki wonders if she jumped the gun on that slap, and while she was pondering her decision, the voice of a sweet angel called her. Onizuka dressed like a serial killer, but mental issues tries to show her his innocent side only to backfire. <laughs> after making some silly remarks about other costume options, the two have a moment together, yet GTO fails to make her believe. The kids see this interaction and they come up with another photo idea. And so, when the next day comes, using the same board, a new photo gets hung showing our boy with a woman from the streets. Like the last time, Onizuka tries to talk sense to his lady friend, but the tears in her eyes blind her from the truth and she slaps him yet again. As the kids think of their next move to push Onizuka one last time, Ms. Fuyutsuki learns in the teacher's lounge that all the pics are fake. Likewise, Yashikawa makes his way to the roof to tell him what's happening. Fuyutsuki then arrives at the perfect time to see her guy has learned the truth and will take matters into his own hands. She apologizes, making his heart fly to the heavens. Onizuka then finds the kids in his schoolroom doing their thing. He takes the head of the operation with him for some quote-unquote private tutoring. Although I wanted him to give the kid the punk's treatment from the first episode, Onizuka did the other best thing, he converted a genius troll to his side to do his betting. The funniest thing about this whole situation was Fuyutsuki saying I'm thankful Onizuka isn't that kind of person after all, while her guy was telling a minor to photoshop actresses' faces and improving on them for some naughty vids as a payment. Another day, another class to teach or rather tell a scary story about a ghost eating people's food that ends in a very anticlimactic way, yet some students enjoy it and others don't. After GTO takes his leave, the little rascals start questioning what went wrong with their last scheme. Hey Kikuchi, what went wrong? How'd they find out that photograph was a fake? Damn, that voice gets on my nerves. After Kikuchi leaves the girl, Yoshiko follows him to talk with the lad and tell him how great and different Onizuka is from other teachers, adding that the former would really like him if he gave him a chance. Speaking about the great teacher Onizuka, your boy is hanging in his room with Ms. Fuetsuki, who is voicing her concern regarding the students of class 3 to 4, as well as the vice principal going for Onizuka's neck, i.e. career. However, your boy is as chill as they come. He enjoys his video game and then tries to raise up Fuetsuki. 
by teaching her how to play. Sadly, the adult time gets cut short when his buddy arrives at the wrong time to play with him. The best girl sees how her man is pretty close with his student, as she smiles and leaves them to play. Soon after, as Yoshikoe was leaving, the girl bullies dragged the little fella to a locker room where they beat him up, humiliate him, and leave him with a warning to never hang out with Onizuka, nor tell a soul about what happened in the locker room, or they will send his pick to everyone in school. Later at night, we see Onizuka calling his new homie Kikuchi for the pics he requested earlier, and from this interaction, we can see the lads are now closer than before. Meanwhile, the vice principal is getting closer to his new replaced car, with too close, some would say. Oh, little does he know. A wild Onizuka in his flip-flops is running top speed toward his beloved to crush his dreams of impressing his family and save a depressed Yashikawa after giving on life yet again. Kikuchi arrives at the school to see his boys at their lowest, but a giga chad like Onizuka doesn't allow such fatherless behavior to go on unanswered. Thus, while the girls were celebrating being C-U-N-T-E-S, your boy sneaked in wearing a girl's uniform for some reason and handed them the first spanking of their life, I would assume, before taking pics to give it to his boy as a defense weapon and destroy the pics of the lad. Yet, as soon as they leave, we learn that Yoshikawa has forgotten the cam in the karaoke room. Therefore, the next day, Anko's mother, believing a teacher, assaulted her kid, which technically happened, but was for the greater good, so we don't talk about it, headed straight to the principal office demanding that Onizuka be fired. Something she might be capable of since that woman is the head of the PTA, the National Parents Teachers Association. So as usual, Ms. Fuyutsuki heads immediately to warn Onizuka, but he doesn't take the matter seriously. They can't intimidate me! What happened to your arm? Why is it so swollen? No fella, is he not pulling the quadmire? You been lifting weights? Uh, no. No, I don't think... No. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Peter, I, I, gotta, I gotta get back. Turns out his arm was broken, so he had to go to the hospital. Hearing about this, the Karen called a meeting for the association to ban Onizuka from the educational system. The class hears about this, and naturally, all the bullies laugh with joy. While Yoshikawa sits and weeps, Kikuchi tries to comfort him, but the lad is determined to help him in any way possible. Speaking about the mighty Onizuka, the man who once took down 20 bikers without a scratch back in his heyday, escapes from the room hospital. Your boy was so bored he climbed out of a window from the fourth floor to go play in a nearby arcade, where he meets his students, talks some shit, and then leaves. Meanwhile, in the cafe, the girls are positive they have won, and Onizuka will be fired 100%. However, a man who was not afraid to dress like a monkey and give the middle finger to the Karen trying to get him fired won't go down easy. Not thanks to his efforts, of course, but thanks to his new loyal students. First, Yoshikawa takes the stage, strips butt naked, and shows his bruised body to reveal Anko's group working. Yet the Karen being as annoying as her C-word of a daughter discredits his claims, but Yoshikawa fires back with, Open your eyes, bitch, see your daughter's signature. Still oblivious, she tries to continue with Onizuka's termination. And that's when his new trusty student interferes. <laughs> Now you would say she finally sees the truth, but the stupid B.H. still tries to believe otherwise. She's the kind of person that would tell you, don't you worry, Princess doesn't bite. That said, Princess does bite, and she bit the hands that feed her. In this situation, putting all the blame on her mom for not paying much attention to her. But your boy calls out her B.S. on the spot. After some stern talking, the two leave defeat at home while Onizuka has a big wholesome smile on his face. Figatsuki heads to the announcement room to find that Kikuchi was the one who played the recording he had done it for his boy Yashikawa as the lad was heartbroken at the thought of losing his new great teacher friend. Anyways, with that traumatic arc behind us, it's time to start a new one with the parents meeting arc, and the kid we will be focusing on is the hothead of class 3-4, Kunio. His mission is to stop Onizuka from doing the teacher home visit. However, unbeknown to him, Onizuka was also not too keen on the whole home visit thing until the boys told him that Kunio's mother is still in her 20s and quite hot, not to mention she's a single mother. Hence, at night, GTO sneaks with Yoshikawa to confirm if the lady is hot or not. When Izuka gets all heated up wanting to see a pic of Ms. Mirai leading him to blow his cover, as in getting caught on all fours chasing the pic by the woman herself. Seeing this, she does the sanest thing a woman would do, kick him in the nuts. Kunio heads out to see what all the rucks are all about, and once he sees it's Onizuka, he panics and takes his mom inside, where he starts imagining all the frisky things the Rizzler might do and vows to protect his mom from that menace. The next day, Kunio learns from girls that they saw his mother hanging out with her blonde teacher, which raises the question of whether he will betray them as the other boys did. 
Back in class, Onizuka tells the kids that there will be no home visits for class 3 to 4, and for the kids to come up with an excuse to tell their parents. Thereafter, when the hothead gets back home, he finds his mom all dressed up and fancy. To his dismay, Mama Mirai is going on a date. Thus, the little lad decides to follow his mother and make sure she has not seen Oni Dog. He gets released once a random guy approaches her, and she kicks him in the nuts, then chills once her friend arrives. However, upon hearing someone call Julia from behind him, his blood pressure rises to the roof. Your boy takes out Ms. Julia Murai to eat and talk about her son's fatherless behavior as he grew up with no one to look up to. So whenever things get tough, he mounts off and runs away, just like how he does once he gets caught spying. The following day after his mom got back home without anything happening, the girls were a bit disappointed as they wanted something to happen so they could spread a rumor of Onizuka hitting on students' moms. Naturally, this doesn't sit well with a mama's boy who refuses the idea of creating a drift in the group. One of Murai's friends rushes to show his boy that Onizuka is showering on the roof and getting ready for the next date. The kid panics and challenges his sensei for an arcade motorcycle race with the condition, if he wins Onizuka won't go on a date with his mom. As expected, the Giga Chad won his right to enjoy a peaceful date, but Murai being a sore loser handcuffs him to a game machine and then flees with his boys. However, as we all know by now, GTO is a tough boy. He destroyed the game biming him and gave chase to the little rascals to get the handcuffs key. Murai runs into his mom during the chase, so he takes her along the chase. When your boy sees her, he puts his foot on the gas and catches up to the bicycle to do some idle chit-chat. After, trash-talking the kid and hitting him with some words of reality on how he lacks the conviction to man up and protect anyone without running away, Murai gets frustrated and loses control of the bike when a wild truck coon appears in front of him, resulting in his mom to go flying towards it. However, the great teacher Onizuka fears no god, he leaps head first to save the woman from being isekai'd. The Giva Chad tells the loser, To protect someone, you should do it wholeheartedly, and not half-ass it. Before heading out to see his date, turns out Onizuka has set up a system, where he only meets with his single mom to talk about their children. Julia was the first one, she also gave feedback to make a pleasant productive experience. Yet, her son still doesn't believe anything of this and keeps talking smack about the man who just saved his mother, so the lady delivers the most satisfying moment in the series so far. Damn, it feels good to be alive right now. After that event, Onizuka continued with his usual homeroom duties and with the usual, we mean doing the unusual, like playing the role of a wingman to one of the students and asking a spirit who has the smelliest feet in class. During this activity, we see how most of the student became chill with her new teacher, unlike the kid with the mom complex who still hates his guts, which is understandable though since Onizuka did call them out for his complex and he did make fun of his stinky feet. Speaking about Mama Mirai, while walking back home, the lad sees his mother looking dazzling it again. Julia is heading to Bowling Alley, and she invites the boys to tag along. Also tagging along is the man, the myth, the great teacher Onizuka himself. Julia asked him to come so that the boys could learn to get along with each other. However, as water and oil, Onizuka and Mirai don't mix well with each other as apparent in their ridiculous facial expressions. Meanwhile, at school, the vice principal is ecstatic about his new car. Likewise, three lads seem to enjoy it to the point they took it. Damn, that man can't catch a break, losing his third car. Back with the boys, they split into two teams. Onizuka ends up stuck with the mama's boy, who manages to pull a strike out of his ass. Seeing this, Onizuka does him one better and throws the ball as if they were on a baseball field as he wanted to quote unquote break the game making it a mega strike. The fun times get cut short when Julia has to go and cover for a co-worker who was injured at work. Needless to say, as soon as she leaves the boys to start bickering among each other and throwing bowling balls as if they were throwing pillows. I mean look at this shit. My dude is laughing at what can be considered attempted murder. But yet again, putting glue on Onizuka's balls, bowling balls to be exact, felt even more downright dirty and dangerous. How can this man enter the bathroom now, I wonder? One thing for sure though, Murai doesn't give a flying frick about what he does, unlike his friends who seem to be softening on him. This frustrates the mama's boy, and he starts kicking the tire of a random car, a big no-no in the hood. The thugs start playing some mental gymnastics on the boys claiming they scratched the car multiple times and then faked an arm injury so they could blackmail a million yen. However, Murai doesn't have it as we can clearly see from the veins throbbing in his forehead. He punches a guy to create an opening, one of the homies gets caught lacking. To their luck, a wild Onizuka arrives cosplaying a character the kids forced him to be when they glued his hands to the balls, and just like the first arc with the tough kids from public school, 
Our boy got all chummy with the gang members, giving them ideas how to torture the brats. Although turning them into real punching bags sounded pretty rough, Onizuka tells the gang they can still take it to the next level, i.e., make them bungee jump off a bridge. The kids understandably lose their shit because who wants to jump off a bridge with a shitty plastic road that isn't meant for the activity? However, Onizuka tells Mama's boy to man the fuck as he can't always count on someone to bail him out whenever things get tough. Recalling the incident and how a man should be, Rai decides to go through the jump with the condition Onizuka never messes with his mom again. After passing the courage test, GTO wraps the robe around a punk's feet telling him, it's your turn. The clueless punk panics and refuses, but it doesn't matter as Onizuka forces them to dive when he changes his identity to another fictional character, which the real ones might identify from the anime, Fist of the North Star. One guy runs away, so the lads enter the white car to give chase to him. Turns out the car belongs to the vice principal as expected, so you know Onizuka gonna trash it during the chase. The next day, the vice principal learns that his precious car is back all trashed up, and to make matters worse for the butt sniffer, the police take him for questioning over the high-speed chase that was all over the newspapers. While reading about him on the roof, the boys seem to finally have broken the wall of mistrust between them and become friends with their homeroom teacher. That said, there is still more to cover from this timeless classic, so if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and drop a comment to give us feedback on whether we should continue with the rest of the arcs or move to another classic. That is all lads, see you next time. Bye.